we will now discuss a very important topic this is eigenvalue problems so omega in rn bounded open set bounded domain let's say no let's see open set gamma equals d omega so we look for we look for lambda in r and u not zero such that minus laplacian u equals lambda u in omega and u equal to zero on gamma so this is called the eigenvalue problem so lambda if there is a solution if there exists a solution uh, lambda u so then lambda is called an eigenvalue and u is called an eigenfunction okay so the set of all eigenfunctions corresponding to uh, so set of all u such that so lambda fixed minus Laplace in u equal to lambda u so lambda fixed so this is called the eigenspace corresponding to lambda so this is a vector subspace because of the linearity of the Laplace operator so if alpha beta are constants u1 u2 are eigenvectors eigenfunctions uh, you can also say eigenvector but usually we will say function because we are dealing with functions and therefore if u1 and u2 are eigenfunctions lam alpha beta are uh, constants and alpha u1 plus beta u2 is also by linearity an eigenfunction corresponding to lambda so this is called the eigenspace so we can pose such uh, problems for different boundary value uh, boundary homogeneous boundary conditions like Neumann condition Robin condition and so on and so forth and also you can post this problem for other elliptic operators but the main flavor of the results will all be shown in this example this uh, standing example prototype for uh, all of these uh, cases and therefore we will look at this in a little more detail so okay so theorem So, omega in Rn bounded open set, gamma equals d omega, then there exists an orthonormal basis Wn of L2 of omega and a sequence of positive numbers lambda n such that 0 is less than lambda 1 less than or equal to lambda 2 less than or equal to etc less than or equal to lambda n less than or equal to lambda n plus 1 and so on lambda n tending to infinity as n tends to infinity and wn belonging to h10 of omega intersection c infinity of omega and minus Laplace n of Wn equals lambda n Wn in omega. Further, the dimension of the eigenspace of each 
lambda n is finite. So, if f belongs to L2 of omega, then you define gf in H10 of omega weak solution minus Laplacian u equals f in omega u equal to 0 on gamma. Okay. So, then uh, for every v in H10 of omega, you have that integral on omega grad gf grad v dx equals integral omega fv. Okay. Okay. Then g from L2 of omega into H10 omega is continuous. We know this. Further, omega is bounded. So, H10 of omega into L2 of omega is compact, relic contrast of. Therefore, you can consider L2 omega into H10 of omega included in L2 of omega. So, G in L of L2 of omega that is a bounded linear operator is compact. L of this means it is a bounded linear operator or continuous linear operator is compact. Okay. And range of G is of course contained in H10 of omega. Okay. So, uh, G is from L2 to L2 is self adjoint. In fact, if f and g are in L2 of omega, then you have integral on omega gf on g dx. This is nothing but integral on omega from this equation here. You have this is nothing but grad gf dot grad gg dx, namely the solution this is a function in H10, it is a test function and this is the solution for G and therefore you have this. But then this is also equal to integral on omega f g g dx. Okay. So, and therefore you have that uh, this mapping is symmetric and ray being real it is self adjoint. Also integral on omega g f f is equal to integral mod grad g f square dx equals mod g f square 1 omega, which is strictly positive if f is not equal to 0. So, now you have a compact self adjoint operator from L2 to L2 namely g and therefore, we appeal to the uh, to function analysis for the spectrum of this operator. The spectrum of g consists of only positive elements because of this condition g f f is greater or equal to 0 of a sequence mu n n equals 1 to infinity mu n tending to 0 okay, mu n eigenvalue and there exists a orthonormal basis of eigenfunctions since L2 is a separable separable Hilbert space okay, uh, uh, base of eigenfunctions Wn. Okay, so, W uh, mu n g of Wn equals mu n Wn. So, this implies of course, that Wn belongs to H10 of omega. And G is positive definite, namely we have this condition here. So, this implies that mu n is not equal to 0. So, you put lambda n equals 1 by mu n and therefore, you have uh, w n equals 
uh, g of lambda n w n that is integral grad w n uh, grad v over omega equals lambda n integral w n v for every v in uh, h 1 0 of omega and therefore you have minus Laplacian w n equals lambda n w n in omega and w n equal to 0 on gamma. Okay, so you have these things and since mu n goes to 0, you have lambda n goes to infinity and therefore you, you can write it in uh, increasing order. And uh, finally, if x belongs to omega, r positive such that b x r contained in omega, then by interior regularity theorem, because ball is very smooth, therefore you have uh, w n in L 2 of omega implies w n is in H 2 of uh, sorry b x r h2 of bxr which in turn implies that wn belongs to h4 of bxr and so on by, and therefore by Sobolev we have that wn belongs to c infinity of omega. Okay, so this completes the proof. We have shown the existence of uh, all these things. Okay, so remark. So, you provide h10 of omega thanks to Poincare's inequality with the inner product integral omega grad u grad v dx equals uv. Okay. So, then lambda n to the minus half wn is an orthonormal basis for h 1 0 of omega because if you take integral uh, two of them so 1 by lambda n lambda m square root grad u n grad u uh, w n grad w m dx is equal to lambda n by lambda m power half integral on omega w n w m dx using the fact that w n is an eigen eigen function and therefore that is in fact equal to delta n m equal to 1 if n equals m 0 if n is not equal to m. So, if n is not equal to m this is 0 so this is automatically 0 if w n equals m then this is equal to 1 this also equal to 1 and therefore you get this equal to 1. Also if u is so this is an orthonormal sequence so if u is in h10 of omega u orthogonal for all n then you have 0 equals integral grad u grad w n on omega and that is equal to lambda n integral omega u w n ok. So this implies that u w n equal to 0 for all n. But u is in h10 of omega, so it is also in L2 and wn is an orthonormal basis for L2 and therefore this is equal to u equal to 0 in L2 of omega and therefore in h10 of omega as well. And therefore, so this implies that lambda n power minus half wn is an orthonormal basis, it is a complete orthonormal set for h10 of omega. Now, if you want to write the Fourier expansion, so if you write u, uh, if you want to write it in this n equals sigma n equals 1 to infinity of integral u w n dx on omega times w n. So, this is the standard L2 uh, expansion. Now, if you wanted to write in H1, so then you will have to write integral, so u will be equal to sigma u w n. Uh, by la root lambda n 
Wn by root lambda n. So this is equal to sigma n equals 1 to infinity 1 by lambda n of uh, u integral grad u grad Wn times Wn and that is also equal to sigma n equals 1 to infinity integral u Wn Wn. And therefore, whatever whether it is in H1 or it is in L2, this is the expansion for the uh, inner product uh, for the for any function if you have ok. So, u so u whether it is the L2 or it does not matter ok. So, the for the expansion is always the same.